Hello everyone. So, I thought to myself, hey, you know, the Hubson, a lot of us bought the Hubson because we liked the look of it. We didn't know what it was going to fly like, we didn't know how many things would or wouldn't work correctly. But we liked what we saw, and we liked this little design. A nice sporty looking thing. Everything inside. And that's why a lot of us bought it. Because a lot of us weren't looking for the technical spec inside. We were just looking for a little quadcopter. A little drone that could be flying around. Halfway decent camera on it. And you could take video with it. But as time goes on. And you crash it. Or you realise that you're props have got to be so well balanced to get rid of that jello or the ND filters and everything else that the Hubson still looks like a nice little quad it still looks like a little quad that can be played around with and it's quite happy with 7 inch propellers on it so you can get a bit of endurance out of this thing so I've decided to show you what I did to the inside of mine because you never know, you might be like me where you think, yeah, I quite like the Hubson. But the problem that I got with it is that it, uh, it doesn't fly the way I wanted it to. I don't have access to the software the way I'd like to. I can't make the changes in settings the way I'd like to be able to. It's all got to be done through Hubson and their updates, their firmware updates. So this takes away all that. And all you're going to do to start off with this is either have had a Hubson, still got a Hubson, get yourself one of these shells, £16 from Banggood. Everything that I talk about, I'll stick a list in the uh, description, okay? You keep the motors, because they're nice motors. They are nice motors. They um, tend to work pretty well and quite quiet. And uh, with a 7 inch prop, you know, they work pretty good, and especially with the 2S thing going on. So you get to keep all the batteries, all the bits and pieces, everything stays the same. We're going to change the ESCs, though, because we want to be able to program the ESCs. So I got a um, Little B, is that right? Little B favourites, 20, 20 amps. Um, again, they uh, will be in the description. Use a Matic 3 amp 5 volt board. So, this is the same board as I use on a lot of things. Yep, this one is different, but it's not actually being used. But um, just about everything I build, I use the same board. It's one of these because one, they're cheap and they work really well. Um, so, there we go. We got a shell, we got the ESCs, we got the main power distribution board, and that gets you started. And then all you're going to do is think about a flight controller. And it all depends what you're going to do with this flight controller. Or what happened, whatever you've got kicking around. Um, I suppose it all depends on what you've got kicking around. I've got to find a way to mount it. Now, when I first did this, I used a bit of plastic. This is a bit of plastic from the enclosure. And, uh, and it's got a bit of flex in it. But it still did the job. You know, it just sits on top here. And will give me enough space underneath, as it should, for the battery to slide in and out. So the battery goes across the top here on these on these runners. Yeah, and it finishes here with these stops. But it sits on top of these runners, so you've got everywhere in between. And uh, so mine was like this. Just fit that on the way it would have been. Pretty similar to that. Uh, but I decided to take that off and quite literally half the weight well, this thing's in focus and I use this bit of carbon fibre from another quad it's just one of those cheap frames you know the one that I've used for my little uh, GPS quad and so that sits on there now and that will hold everything so the flight controller will go on there I was going to put a uh, video transmitter there but I'm not quite sure I may just adjust this slightly I'm not sure I was hoping that I could get it so my flight controllers uh, USB would stick out of the back but that hasn't worked out to plan so I have to think of something else I'm actually thinking about going down the Bluetooth path just because um, it might be easier for me just to slot this into it somewhere 
and just use Bluetooth to access settings, changes, firmware upgrades, etc. Most of the other things I'll be able to do from the uh, from the remote, you know, from the uh, controller. So yeah, this is going to be the start. Just a couple of videos for this one. It's going to be this one, just telling you about what it is I'm doing, and the next one's going to be with the parts fitted in and pretty much going. If you want me to do something in between, say. But chances are you won't, because there's so many videos out there showing you how you to connect up this, how you connect up that. But maybe as we go down the down the path, um, everything that I do will uh, have a video made out of it. So yeah, so this is what I'm going to start doing the hubs. And now I've chosen to put in a Cadex Rattel at this minute in time, just because it's got a nice picture on there, and it's going to be ideal for what I want to do. I'm not saying you're all going to want to choose the same thing, but I'm choosing that just for now because I've got it, it's here, I've got it, and the only other small camera that I've got really is uh, this little um, Swift 2, and that's to go on the back of my wing, so we get some of that video going off backwards when I do launches, or coming in for landing, however it is I want to do it. So there you go, if you were wondering what you could do with that... Uh, I'll just let you see up in there. Look, we've got a receiver up in there. It's a little FR sky. And we've got a flight controller there. It's all hanging about, swinging about at the moment. Because, of course, that will actually be bolted down, but it won't get done until I put it all together. Um, and the VTX is on a... I'm wondering if this is actually focusing or not. Ah, maybe I should press that button there. That's it. Hey, yeah. Let me just put that down a second and there we go. So, uh, yeah, does that? That lets me focus in like that. Yeah, so we use that UFO connection anyway, so there we go. There you go, guys. Um, you know, you wonder what you could do with a £16 frame, because think about it, right? This is £16 for the frame. They cost like about £10 each for the motors. In all honesty, it hardly costs anything for a little sporty looking thing like this. Don't get, don't expect it to perform that great. It's on 2S. But who cares? As long as you can fly this thing around and have some fun with it. Who cares? You get to use the same motors and everything. Um, but that's it. My little Hubson 501 project that is going to be turned into the Hubson, well, the H501SE, I'm going to call it. So it's a H501S, but then it's been a lucky fund. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now, take care everybody.